America, the greatest country on earth. A narrative packed and sold to tiny patriots, reinforced by every cartoon, movie, cheeseburger, and mattress sale. Guaranteed. A mythology so entrenched, our most beloved personalities urge us never to question it. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. This right now is the greatest country on earth. Greatest country God ever gave me. You're the greatest country in the world, I'll tell you that. Oh, America's the greatest country in the world. But what if we did question it? Now, hold on, patriots. I know what you're thinking. America's done some pretty great stuff. And you're right. We built a kick-ass democracy, walked on the moon, and we built universities so prestigious that even Taliban warlords send their kids. And they're still very patient. By the time the Cold War was waning and baby boomers were booming out their own babies, it truly felt like we were the greatest country on Earth. Now, listen, of course there's no single way to measure greatness. But one good test is how we rank in the OECD, which is basically a golf club of 36 countries, predominantly wealthy, Western, and democratic. And unlike most golf clubs, this one's got some diversity too. America is the richest country in this club, but we're also the poorest, with a whopping 18% poverty rate. Closer to Mexico than Western Europe, 12.8 million American children live in poverty. That's almost one in five of our kids. And speaking of kids, turns out at the level of high school science, we're 19th of 36. Reading, 20th. And math, a dismal 30th. Now, I'm not that good at math, not America's fault, but that does not add up well. And neither does this. We spend more on healthcare than any other country in the golf club, especially out of our own private little pockets. But we live sicker and shorter lives. We're fatter. And globally, we're more likely to see newborns die. We're even behind Bosnia. But we have freedom in America, and everyone's jealous or something. The enemies of freedom. Pursuing the enemies of freedom. The enemies of freedom. And other enemies of freedom. Turns out, a lot of countries have freedoms. And while we boast about them, using our rights is a different story. Only 56% of Americans turn out to vote, while it's closer to 80% in countries like Denmark and Australia. And it's getting worse. This year, America slid on global rankings of corruption and freedom, and dropped from a functional to a flawed democracy. So what, besides our economy and military, are we actually number one in? Turns out, a lot of things. Civilian gun ownership, mass shootings, TV watching, prescription drug abuse, prison population, Oh, and almost number one on environmental damage, edged out by China. It's gotten to a point where I think there are specific times and places where you can confuse America for a developing country, as elections are tampered with, water can't be drunk from taps, citizens don't trust uniformed officers, infrastructure is crumbling, and where a dual system is emerging when public services are for sale for the highest bidder. You see this in countries like Pakistan or Nigeria, where the rich don't worry about the sad state of electricity or police because, well, they have generators and private security. Or in America, where the Kardashians rent their own firefighting force. We were fortunate enough and blessed enough, and I know that not everyone has this luxury available to them, but we were able to get private firefighters. When health, education, and safety are increasingly privatized or driven by privilege, the truth is, how great America is really depends on how rich you are. Now, I'm not saying where Pakistan or Nigeria or any number of what we like to call developing countries, but we're not perched as high above them as we'd like to think. We got so caught up in the rhetoric about America being the greatest country on earth that we've long ignored the cracks in our system. And while a bit of patriotism is great, jingoism is dangerous, especially when it's built on old or fake news. So as we gear up for another election season where politicians tell us America is great or that it isn't and then proceed to make it worse, let's try a more truthful approach. America may once have been the greatest, but today America, we're just okay.